ゆめじゅうや第三夜こんな夢を見た六つになる子供をぶってる確かに自分の子であるただ不思議なことにはいつの間にか目がつぶれて青坊主になっている自分が「お前の目はいつつぶれたのかい?」と聞くと何昔からさと答えた声は子供の声にそういないが言葉つきはまるで大人であるしかも対等だ左右は青田である道は細いサギの影が時々闇にさす「半ぼえかかったね」と背中で言った「どうしてわかる?」と顔を後ろへ振り向けるようにして聞いたら「だってサギが泣くじゃないか」と答えたするとサギが果たして二声ほどになる。自分は我が子ながら少し怖くなったこんなものを背負っていてはこの先どうなるかわからないどこかうっちゃるところはなかろうかと向こうを見ると闇の中に大きな森が見えたあそこならばと考え出す途端に背中で「<笑>という声がした何を笑うんだ子供は返事をしなかったただ「お父さん重いかい?」と聞いた「重くはない」と答えると「今に重くなるよ」と言った「So Seki's Ten Nights Dreams The Third Dream This is a dream I dream I was carrying a child of six on my back I'm sure it was a child only the strange thing was before I realized it He was blind with a freshly shaven head. When I asked, Why did you lose your sight? He replied, What? Long ago. I'm sorry. When did you lose your sight? He replied, What? Long ago. There's no doubt that voice was a child, but he spoke like he was an adult, like an equal. Green rice paddies were to the left and right. The road was narrow, the fleeting shadows of herons could be seen in the darkness. We've started toward the rice paddies, haven't we? He said on my back. I turned my face to the rear and asked, How do you know? Aren't the herons crying? He answered. Sure enough, when he said that, they cried out twice. Although he was my own child, I became a little frightened. With him on my back, I didn't know what would happen from here on. I wondered if there weren't some place I could just abandon him. When I looked out into the darkness, and I could see a large forest. Just as I started to think, it's over there, a voice going, he he, came from my back. What are you laughing at? He didn't answer. All I heard was, Father, am I heavy? You're not heavy, I replied. Soon I'll become heavy. 自分は黙って森を目印に歩いていった歯の中の道が規則にうねってなかなか思うように見られないしばらくすると二股になった自分は股の根に立ってちょっと休んだ石が立ってるはずだがなと小僧が言ったなるほど八寸角ほどの石が小小戸の高さに立っている表には左膝が久保、右堀田原だった。闇だのに赤い字が明らかに見えた。赤い字はイモリの腹のような色であった。左がいいだろうと小僧が命令した。左を見るとさっきのイモリが闇の影を赤い空から自分らの頭の上へ投げかけていた。自分はちょっと躊躇した。遠慮しないでもいいと小僧がまた言った自分は仕方なしに森の,森の方へ歩き出した腹の中ではよくめくらのくせに何でも知ってるなと考えながら
一筋道を森へ近づいてくる背中で「どうも盲目は不自由でいけないね」と言っただからおぶってやるからいいじゃないかおぶってもらってすまないがどうも人にバカにされていけない親にまでバカにされるからいけないなんだか嫌になった早く森へ行って捨ててしまおうと思って急んだ I kept quiet and, with the forest as my guide, walked toward it. The road in the rice fields twisted irregularly. We couldn't exit as easily as I had thought. After a while, the path forked. I stood at the split in the road and rested. The boy said, there should be a stone standing here. Sure enough, an eight-inch square stone stood about a waist high. Written on the face, left, Higakubo, right, Hotahara. I could clearly see those red letters in spite of the darkness. They were like the red color of a newt's belly. Left will be fine, the boy ordered. When I looked left, the forest was starting to cast dark shadows from the sky over our heads. I hesitated a little. The boy added, you don't need to hold back. Helplessly, I started walking toward the forest. I was thinking that the boy seemed to know everything, even though he was blind. When the single road approached the forest, he sat on my back, being blind is really an inconvenience, but it's okay because I'm carrying you. I'm sorry you have to carry me, but to be made a fool of by people won't do. To be made a fool of by a parent especially won't do. Some things had become unpleasant. Somehow things had become unpleasant. I was thinking how I wanted to hurry to the forest and dispose of him. And I hurried. もう少し行くとわかるちょうどこんな晩だったな背中で独り言のように何が際どい声を出して聞いた何がって知ってるじゃないかと子供あざけるように答えたするとなんだか知ってるような気がしだしたけれどもはっきりとはわからないただこんな晩であったように思えるそうしてもう少し行けばわかるように思えるわかっては大変だからわからないうちに早く捨ててしまって安心しなくてはならないように思える自分はますます足を早めた雨はさっきから降っている道はだんだん暗くなるほとんど夢中であるただ背中に小さい小僧がくっついていてその小僧が自分の過去現在未来をことごとく照らして寸分の事実も漏らさない鏡のように光っているしかもそれが自分の子であるそうして盲目である自分はたまらなくなったここだここだちょうどその杉の根のところだ雨の中で小僧の声ははっきり聞こえた自分は覚えずとどまったいつしか森の中へ入っていた一軒ばかり先にある黒いものは確かに小僧の言う通り杉の木と見えたお父さんその杉の根のところだったねうん、そうだと思わず答えてしまう文化5年辰年だろうなるほど文化5年辰年らしく生まれたお前が俺を殺したのは今からちょうど100年前だね自分はこの言葉を聞くやいなや今から100年前文化5年の辰年のこんな闇の晩にこの杉の根のところで一人の盲目を殺したという自覚が突然として頭の中にあったこれは人殺しだったんだと初めて気がついた途端に背中の子が急に獅子像のようにいなくなった You'll understand when we get a little further It was just like this night He said on my back Like he was speaking to himself What was I asked with an intensity in my voice 
What was? You know, don't you? The child answered with a sneer. And then I got the, this feeling that I did. But clearly I didn't know. It was just that I felt like it happened on a night like this. It felt like it was, like I just went a little farther. I would know. I felt, I felt like if I just went a little farther, I would know. Knowing would be difficult. So while I didn't understand, I hurried to dispose of him. I had to feel relief. I hurried. Rain had been falling for some time. Little by little the road darkened. It was almost like a dream. But this small child was sticking to my back, and he illuminated my entire past, present and future, shining like a mirror that didn't miss an ounce of the truth. Yet he was my child, and he was blind. I couldn't stand it. Here, here, right at the cedar's roots. I could clearly hear the kid's voice. Unconsciously, I stopped. Without noticing, we had entered the forest. Just five feet in front of me was a black mass. Without a doubt, I could see it was the cedar tree the kid had spoke of. Father, it was at this cedar's roots there, wasn't it? Without thinking, I replied, yes, it was. I think it was 1809, the year of the dragon. Of course, I was made to think 1809. From today, it's been exactly 100 years since you killed me. As I heard those words, 100 years ago, the year of the dragon, on a dark night like this, by the, ro by the roots of a cedar, the realization that I murdered a blind man abruptly burst into my mind. And as soon as I started to become aware that I was a murderer, the child on my back suddenly grew as heavy as a stone Jesus statue.